The All Powers R600 and their 100 watt folding solar panel just earned its spot as my favorite ultra portable power station and portable solar panel. Don't believe me? Stay tuned. This thing can run an entire full size fridge for multiple hours on end. It packs a punch in a small package. Let me show you. Can the All Powers R600 run a full size refrigerator? This is my main fridge in my kitchen, and as you can see, it is very much full size. To get this fridge going, it uh, usually surges up to about 1,000 watts, 900 uh, sometimes, give or take, it just depends. Supposedly, this power station can surge up to 1,200, and then it's got a 600 watt inverter. Once this gets going, actually, it really only pulls about 90, a high 90 watt range, 100 watts when just the compressor's running. When it goes through a defrost mode, uh, it'll spike up to, you know, the high 300s, 400 range, but all of that should be well within capability of this power station. So let's give it a try and see what happens. Let's uh, plug this in. And turn on the inverter. Three, two, one. And there it went. So you saw it surge up and then uh, it dropped down to the low 100 watt uh, range. So that's pretty good. Uh, this little power station here has enough oomph to uh, get a, at least my style of full size fridge running. Let's see how long it lasts. By way of reference, it's 11.24 a.m. This just shut off. It shut off shy of 0%, but I think the voltage dropped low enough when the fridge was running that uh, it cut off and then the voltage rebounded a little bit after it shut off. It's 5.15, so this ran full-size fridge for about six hours. Okay, interesting observation about this uh, power station. I was uh, trying to get it down to 0% to do the recharge test here. I thought, oh, I'll just plug in a, a small load on the AC side. I was already discharging off the DC side. And uh, if I come here and push the button to turn on the inverter, it beeps and then shuts off. It won't turn on. So seems to be actually a hard lockout once it hits a 5% battery capacity. The inverter will no longer turn on. However, the DC side is alive and well and uh, outputting 30 some odd watts. So we'll see when we charge this back up if the inverter turns back on or if it uh, toasted itself. Finally got to a 0% state of charge. We're ready to do the AC quick charge test. These are being powered off a different power station. You can see right here we've got it on fast charge mode. Started out pretty slow but uh, seems to be ramping up now. We're up to 163 watts of input. And uh, just so all of you can see, the uh, temperature right now is 74.3 degrees. Now they do advertise that this unit on fast mode can charge at up to 400 watts. And uh, if you notice, we finally reached it. Uh, it took until it hit uh, about 10-12% uh, until we finally got up to the 400 watt mark. Six percent and 52 minutes almost 53 minutes it's throttled itself it was going full steam at uh, 400 plus watts and now it's down to the mid 200s the claim is that it will go 0 to 99 percent in one hour I don't think that's gonna happen we'll see though coming up on the hour mark and uh, as you can see we're at 92 percent so Close to 99, but uh, not quite the 99% uh, advertised speed. In terms of temperature, about 72, high 71, 72. We just hit 99%, an hour and 14 minutes basically in. And literally a minute later, it uh, finished up to 100%. So it did not quite meet the advertised charging speed. It was close, but not quite. Can this All Powers R600 power? An electric hot plate. Let's find out. Overload. 
which isn't a surprise. This uh, hot plate uh, pulls over 1800 watts and uh, obviously this power station has only a 600 watt inverter. Let's uh, make sure that it uh, is able to uh, reset itself. Looks like we're in good shape. Again, the all powers R600 power, a full size household vacuum cleaner. Based on the last test that we just did for the hot plate, the answer is no. This has an incredible surge, and then once it's up and running, it's pulling about 1500 watts, and this only has a 600 watt inverter. Can the all powers R600 power? a high-end gaming PC slash workstation. Now, I just want to show you here that uh, just at idle, this uh, computer, all three 4K monitors are pulling about 300 watts. And I know that uh, this computer can go in excess of 700 watts when it's under load. So yes, it is currently powering the computer. Notice that uh, nothing's plugged into the outlet uh, there. I've just got a uh, surge protector there and uh, it comes over here and plugs right into the all powers. But uh, you'd, you'd want to be careful with how much load you put on the computer if you have a computer that's as powerful as this because you could easily go past the 600 watt limit on this and then have everything come crashing to a stop. So I'm going to say yes, it can power a high-end gaming PC within reason. Mine is overclocked and just a huge power hog. The vast majority of the PCs out there, this will be able to power no problem. Let's test the UPS capability. You just saw me test my high-end gaming PC. That would be the best place to test the UPS function. I have had damage caused to my computer before testing UPS switching times, and since I use that to make my living, I don't want to run the risk of causing damage to it. So we get to enjoy the lamp test today. Notice that here on the screen it says the UPS is enabled, and uh, that's because we are plugged into the wall outlet right there and uh, then the lamp is uh, plugged in right here. So let's pull the plug in three, two, one. So we had a, a short flash, but uh, not uh, any extended periods. Plug it back in. And it switched back over. My personal opinion about that is I would not use a power station as a dedicated UPS. I would actually put a specific UPS on your sensitive electronics and that will help protect them for when the power goes out. And then go ahead and uh, grab your power station and plug the UPS into the power station. So then that's passing uh, power through to the computer and uh, life is good. No matter the brand or the quality, I would probably never rely on a power station to 100% be a UPS to protect critical electronic equipment. And now one of everyone's favorite tests. Can this All Powers R600 run? A batch of wash. Well, based on the vacuum test and the hot plate test, we know that it cannot run the dryer. Now, this is a gas powered dryer, so it only runs on 120 volt AC power, but to get that drum started and spinning requires a huge amount of surge. And uh, even power stations that are nearly four times the size of this, like uh, the EcoFlow Delta 1300, Anchor Solix C1000, can't start this dryer. So it's certain to say that uh, a unit that has an inverter that is one-third the size of those other inverters would not be able to start that either. The washer doesn't take nearly as much uh, power to uh, do its thing uh, than the dryer does. So uh, let's give that a shot here. What I'm going to do is first show you that this plug uh, pertains to this washer. So we're going to plug that in and uh, you can see the washer is booting up. What we're going to do is just do a rinse and a spin. Let's just see how much power that consumes out of this unit. I think the inverter will be able to run it, but uh, will the battery capacity be sufficient? We're at a state of charge at only 72%. This is a full load. It's agitating the clothes. Every time it surges, it goes up to like 400-ish watts and then uh, dies down. So within spec, 
and uh, the washer seems to be functioning just fine. Officially in spin mode, and as you can see, it's only drawing a little over 100 watts of power, so. All right, the wash is done. See everything spun there? And uh, that took exactly 10% capacity on the power station. So on my particular washer, where uh, a full load would basically be double that, um, I could uh, see this taking, let's just say, 25% uh, for easy math. So with my particular washer, I could get uh, about four batches of wash done on a single charge with this unit. I think it definitely punched above its weight class in this test. Can the all powers R600 power a 120 volt mini split heat pump? Well, this ramps down to the low 200, 300 watt range when it's just kind of coasting but uh, it can ramp all the way up to 900 plus watts uh, when it's really working and sometimes right on initial startup uh, as it's getting things going. So I'm gonna have to say no, this cannot run this because this only has a 600 watt inverter. And the all powers are 600 power, follow the yellow cord. A full size household gas furnace. Now we're being able to run this off that power station due to this little device right here. This is the easy generator switch. I'll put a link for the video of when I installed this. Makes it super, super easy to provide power to critical appliances like this furnace during a power outage. Okay, the induced draft is on. The hot surface igniter just turned on. Those two things are pulling just over 100 watts. Now that hot surface igniter is off, the induced draft is only pulling 65 watts. All right, the blower is now fully up to speed. And if we look here, it's pulling just over 400 watts. So for my particular furnace, this power station would actually give me uh, just shy of an hour's worth of runtime if it was fully charged. Let's do uh, some testing with this awesome solar panel. I've depleted uh, the power station down to 50%. We're gonna set this panel up and see if we can recharge this back to 100% with the remaining daylight that we have. As you can see here, it's about 1.25 p.m. All right, that was a pretty easy setup. Dang, 86 watts from a 100 watt solar panel. That is not too shabby. All right, we'll let this uh, sit here in the sun for a minute and uh, we'll come back and uh, see how it's done. I missed it here for a few hours, but it's uh, 412 now and uh, I'm sure this is fully charged. Yep, 100%. Watch how easy it is to pack this solar panel up. So as you saw, it took more time to undo the cables and uh, zip up the pouch than it did to actually clean up the panel itself. These panels are extremely easy to deploy, and uh, this one has just reached uh, my favorite portable panel status on my list just because of how light and how portable it is. I love it. Okay, let's unbox these. Got a really nice uh, envelope here. And inside we've got uh, some documentation. Here's the power station. AC charging cord, no charging brick, hooray. That's all in this box. There's the uh, folding solar panel. These things are kickstands to hold the panel up in this pocket. I have all kinds of goodies. First, I'm super happy to see coming right out of the panel straight into MC4 connectors. I love MC4 connectors. Got some documentation here. Ah oh, man, we hit the jackpot with this. Four silica packets, what a deal. They include uh, some common barrel plugs, it looks like, which is awesome. MC4, two, uh, what appears to be a 5521 barrel plug. And uh, I assume that will then allow these to plug onto the end so you can adapt that. So that's nice to see. 
MC4 to XT60. And that's the cable you need for this power station to connect right there. The uh, solar charging cable is included with the solar panel, not the power station, which makes sense. This is a really nice design that on Velcros. And then this just opens up. We'll make it super fast and super easy to deploy. Some of the other panels this same size, you know, we'll have like four panels that unfold, so they're shorter, longer. The open circuit voltage is 22.4 volts, and then the short circuit current is six amps. The VMP is 18 volts, and the IMP is 5.4 amps. And there's no uh, particular specifications on how many you can connect. They do show that uh, it's capable with connecting to other panels in series or in parallel. In the case of the pictures here, it's showing either two or three. I'm really excited about this power station. One of my all-time favorite portable power stations is the Blue Eddy EB3A. This may have just uh, stolen its crown because it's very similar form factor with a lot of the same features and yet goes above and beyond. So nice carrying handle on the top and uh, it's got a pretty nice soft close uh, feature. It doesn't do it on its own, you have to do it, but uh, it it kind of slows it down a little bit, so that's nice. We've got a 15 watt wireless charger here on the top, which uh, we've kind of been seeing a departure from these uh, on other stations, and it's nice to see it back. I use it, I don't know about the rest of you, but I like the wireless charging. On the front, we've got the DC uh, cigarette style lighter uh, outlet here, the light switch and the power button. Let's turn it on. Push and hold, came uh, at 6%, oh, just kidding, 72% state of charge. See this light? I'm happy to see they don't have strobe. Here are your two outlets right here. Two 100 watt power delivery ports. Love seeing that. And thankfully, not just uh, your average dinosaur USB ports, but uh, these appear to be quick charge ports. On this side is our charging. We've got the AC input right here. And we've got the DC XT60 there. Resettable breaker right there in the middle. Incidentally, right here, they've printed uh, the information, which is great. 12 to 60 volts, 8.8 .8 amps max. It has a battery capacity of 299 watt hours. And it has a 600 watt continuous inverter. It says it can surge up to 1200 watts. It does have a UPS and it's rated down to only 10 milliseconds switching time. Let's test that and see, that is fast. And it does have an app. All right, let's just add via Bluetooth and uh, it'll ask if we can search for it, will it allow it uh, pulls it right up, we'll click on it, and uh, here's the main home screen. We can toggle things off and on like the light and the AC-DC. This is the place where you can change the charging speed as well as set a time for how long eco mode uh, stays on if you enable that. And then you have the input and output and battery percentage. It's pretty basic. And that uh, concludes our testing for today. For the small slash medium range of power station, this one really checks a lot of boxes for me. It uh, easily replaces my previous favorite power station in this range, Luetti EB3A. And this combination with this super awesome folding solar panel paired with this for things like, you know, 12 volt uh, compressor fridges, uh, your mobile uh, electronic devices, battery chargers, etc. This is a winning combination. It is so slick and so portable. So I think All Power has really knocked this out of the park. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for both of these products. And uh, while you're down there, be sure and check out my power station testing spreadsheet. I've got uh, all the power stations listed there that I've uh, tested, a rating system, and uh, a bunch of information that uh, could be helpful to you. The tests that I did today in the video are a little more heavy duty. This size of power station can compete with some of those uh, larger units just simply because of the size difference. The other thing All Powers just does a great job at is bang for the buck. I think you'll be impressed with what the price is for this package. Leave comments down below on what you guys think. Please consider subscribing as well. We always appreciate as many likes as we can get. It, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. We'll catch y'all next time.